Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at the method of branch currents. So on screen what I've got right now is a few laws and assumptions that I'm going to be using. So if you look on the right hand side of our screen we've got a current in the branch IA and then we've also got a current IB in the branch B and that goes into a red node or just a node off to the right hand side in the branch IC. So what this is saying is the currents as they enter a node must equal the current leaving a node. So if we take the combination of IA plus IB that must equal to IC. So 7 ohms plus 5 ohms must equal to 12 ohms. And for continuity if we did IA plus IB minus IC so that's taking the net inflow minus the net outflow must equal zero. Now if we don't have that, that means something's gone fundamentally wrong. So that's the first law to know. The, the current entering a node must equal the current exiting the node. And that for continuity, that must be met. Now let's talk about voltage drops. So we've got a closed series circuit here. I've got a battery with two resistors, R1 and R2. What I've done is added signs to the battery. So the short length is the negative and the long length of the battery is the positive. What I've said is that current flows from in this direction, which is clockwise because electrons flow from negatively charged to positively charged. So opposites attract electrons are negative and they flow in the opposite direction so they flow in a clockwise movement in, in this so what I've done is as this is the negative terminal of the battery I've said at the first point of contact with res the first resistor it's going to be negative and then I've assigned the opposite sign of the resistor to be positive as the current flows clockwise again as the first contact with resistor 2, that's going to be negative and then the opposite side is going to be positive. And if we go back around, that should all align up. So I've said in this loop, again, for continuity, the voltage drops must equal zero. So what does that mean? So in a series circuit, remember the voltage gets split. So the, in parallel, the voltage remains the same. In this case, the voltage between R1 and R2 should equal Vs because the voltage or the power source is getting split across R1 and R2 and that is going to be dependent on the resistor values. So we say that the negative voltage drop of R1 because we've assigned a negative sign first as the current flows in this direction. So we said we we hit a negative sign first so we're going to have a negative voltage drop which is negative VR1, the, cu the current flows again, we hit a negative sign first because this is our assumption and the negative voltage drop of VR2, so it's negative VR2 and as the current goes back around we hit a positive Vs of the power source plus Vs should equal zero. Now that's the law of continuity of voltage drops. Now we will be using both of these laws now in this example. So in this example I've also stated five steps on how to solve the unknown voltage drops of resistors in a circuit where we can't use series and parallel reductions. We can't use V equals IR to work out the individual series and parallel resistance voltage drops. We've got two power sources and therefore it's a little bit more complicated. We can't use those laws. So here are the five steps you must follow. Firstly, we're going to mark each power source and resistor with a positive and negative sign. Just like I did in this bottom right hand corner diagram, we're going to be doing exactly that's exactly the same. And we're going to have to do it for each power source. Remember, for each power source. Secondly, we're going to indicate the assumed current directions. Now, in this case, as I've talked about, current flows from negative to positive, so we're going to have to do the same thing for both loops. Can you see how we've got two loops, which is A, B, E, F, A? So this is one loop, 
and then we've also got C B E D because the negative terminals and the negative terminals are both here and then we're going to identify the loops which we already discussed so there's two and using Kirchhoff's voltage laws write the equations for each loop so we can do that and then replacing the voltage drops we're going to use IR remember V equals IR Kirchhoff's law and what we should get is two sets of simultaneous equations the reason why it's two is because we've got two loops so as we transition through one loop and to the second loop we're going to have two sets of equations with two sets of voltage drops for each resistors and finally using those simultaneous equations and finally using V equals IR we should be able to know each voltage drop across each resistor so what I'm going to do is find the currents and voltage drops for each resistor in the circuit in the second part of the video.